My friends, how are you all? <laughs> what a joy to see you. And uh, I know you'll be more than happy and joyful. The chosen fans, Jonathan Rumi fans, what a big army <laughs> is this? <laughs> as big as, uh, I don't know. I love Jonathan as well. For me, there is a lot of uh, space in my heart for everyone. Jonathan, Reza, Paras, Noah, Noah James. <laughs> Sometimes I'm uh, tempted to call him Noah Alexander for, I don't know <laughs> why. Him as well, um, I don't know. All of them, really. I couldn't say that uh, there is something more special in my heart for Jonathan or okay Reza maybe but anyway you understand the idea I love them all I appreciate what they do and uh, look at Jonathan how powerful he is in uh, promoting Jesus in showing his faith uh, courageously to everyone as he is a Catholic Christian if that is not an encouragement not just for uh, those of you that uh, happens to be Catholic but for everyone for everyone that is a Christian in this day and age in which people they think that faith is something quote-unquote personal they hide their faith and they do that uh, with not a good uh, results in their life faith is not to hide faith is to share that's what Jonathan is doing here He's using all his platforms to share, to talk about God, to talk about his faith, to make a difference, to encourage people. Like this video that you're going to see, it's not a brand new video. It's a video that was done during uh, the craziness with COVID. Uh, but he was there to encourage and people, they were praying with him. Now you cannot make everyone happy. I seen this many times you cannot be loved by everyone I've seen this many times you don't need to make everybody happy <laughs> all you need to do is to focus on God and to allow God to guide you to show you the way you be focused on God and you cannot go wrong and while as we are human beings and we are imperfect uh, we're gonna do with some mistakes on along the way if God is our strength then we will share the light and people will see light that's why we should share always our faith and to be one in Christ regardless uh, of our denominational color well, to see people are not divided anymore, to see people not uh, hating anymore, well, there will be a time in which uh, when Christ returns and when he establishes his kingdom here on this earth, when all these uh, human governments will fall uh, forever, they are a joke anyway. They've always been a joke. When Christ will take power, you will see. There will be unity and love, no more sin. <laughs> Let's make sure that we reach heavenly Jerusalem, that we live a life that honors God. So we will be in in that kingdom that uh, Christ will establish in, here on this earth. Music, as always, is uh, none other but David Lastra, deep instrumental worship. You know what to do. I always give him a big shout out because he deserves it. Go to his YouTube channel on search bar, type there deep space instrumental space worship. Click and you'll see loads and loads of good music. David is producing again and again music. Powerful, beautiful, inspirational music that um, I don't know if you feel anxious or sad or. If you had a very hard day, a stressful day at work, you just come home, you put that music. Or you are uh, coming home when you are in the train or, I don't know, on the tube, and just listen. <laughs> Makes a big difference. Now, 
after this introduction, I love introductions. Bringing value to the video, commenting on the video, reaction on the video, and final comments, you know, that's what I do. Let's uh, take a look at this video again. This video is about three years ago. Uh, it was done by Ista. <laughs> Yeah, around April, break prelish 2020. All the time goes by. Jonathan encouraging, sharing with his fans, uh, lifting up people. It was uh, in the midst of the pandemic, it was not easy, but people were so discouraged, many, you know. We had to stay indoors. It was hard. It was hard. But he was there to encourage. So, let's take a look. Three, two, one. Go. Okay. <laughs> Happy Easter, friends. Happy Resurrection Sunday. Happy Resurrection Day. As you can see, I'm in a, a new location today. I had the, uh, the pleasure and the honor of having some Easter company, my, uh, my quarantine family. So, forgive me for being a few minutes late. We had to set up, and they all were gracious enough to go take a walk to do some praying, praying of their own, while I joined you all here. Um, and these very close friends, uh, sisters in Christ. And, uh, yeah, I was so... Um, so grateful to be able to have somebody to share the joy of today with Hi George, happy Easter. Christ is risen. Indeed, he's risen. Yes, happy Resurrection Day, friends. Uh, I decided in honor to wear my the one of the first faith-related shirts. You only live once. Just kidding. Be right back, Jesus. So, YOLO, JK, BRB, Jesus. Um, happy Easter Monday for those of you on the other side of the world. Australia, the Philippines, um, probably midnight in the Netherlands, as well as the rest of Europe, most of Europe. So yeah, I'm excited to be here. Um, but of course I had to dress it up just a little bit here, so I'll just put back the buttons. I've got my fancy coffee today. Um, I don't have my mic, so hopefully. Oh my gosh. Tina, you're in the middle of a tornado. In the safe room and you're here with me wow well god bless you uh oh it's not what i meant to do that was the table that i'm sitting at uh god bless you god may uh the lord keep you safe in this uh time of storms and know that uh he has you and as you can see i've got my portable divine mercy plaque as well as this Easter cross that my friend Sigrid made. Isn't that beautiful? Look how beautiful that is. She made these for all of us here for uh, 
for Easter brunch. So, yeah. Yeah. So, the blessings of the risen Christ be with you, Tina, and protect you during your tornado. And you will make it. Clearly, the, uh, the internet works, so that's fantastic. That's good news. Um, so, yeah. Let's get cracking. It's 3.15. And I'm going to start out reading from today's devotional page in Jesus Calling. As we are April the 12th, My brothers and sisters, that this may be particularly pertinent for uh, especially Tina in the midst of a tornado. Um, well, first, let me, as always, open up our time together sign of the cross in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for the gift of today, the gift of your resurrection, the gift of your life sacrificed to us on the cross, which after three days was brought to us in the fullness of of eternal life through the resurrection by conquering death. Lord, we are so grateful that you have brought us here together in your name to praise and worship with you, to praise and worship you and with you and with each other in unity, regardless of denominations or faiths or origins of religious practice. But we are here today, taking this hour to commemorate the sacrifice of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who has conquered death as we commemorate today his triumphant return to glory through his resurrection. We ask you, Lord, to keep all of our friends listening and watching safe and blessed and may their families be safe during the time of this coronavirus may you watch over all of us and send forth your hedge of protection among us and be with us here today as we pray in Jesus name amen a devotion from April 12th of Jesus calling. Trusting me is a moment by moment choice. My people have not always understood this truth. After I performed miracles in the wilderness, my chosen children trusted me intensely, but only temporarily. Soon the grumbling began testing my patience to the utmost. Isn't it often the same way with you? You trust me when things go well, when you see me working on your behalf. This type of trust flows readily within you, requiring no exertion of your will. When things go wrong, your trust flow slows down and then solidifies. You are forced to choose between trusting me intentionally or rebelling, resenting my ways with you. This choice constitutes a fork in the road. Stay on the path of life with me, enjoying my presence. Choose to trust me in all circumstances. 
inspiration for today's devotion is from Exodus chapter 15, verses 22 to 25, and Psalm 31, verses 14. Driving over here today, I felt such joy. It's the best way I can describe it. So joyful. The idea that our Lord who undergo, underwent such vicious, cruel, and horrific tortures two days before could today be made whole through the Father, through his conquering of death, through the liberation of all those in captivity, under the earth, as well as those on the earth, those of us who believe in him. If you are um, here because you're curious about what I have to say about faith, but maybe you yourself may not have a particular faith. If you're merely fans of the show, I, I encourage you to to really uh, ask the questions. What brought you here? What makes you want to um, commune with those of us here that are praying? to Christ, maybe you're searching, maybe you're searching for truth. Well, you've, you've found the right place because Jesus Christ is the ultimate example of truth. And if you examine his words, if you read his life through the lens of scripture, the four gospels in the New Testament, in the Bible, Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and you read the words that Christ says, there's no way to get around the fact that it's pure truth, pure, unadulterated truth. And as he says, the truth shall set you free. So if you've never picked up a Bible or opened a, opened a Bible, I encourage you to do it. If it was a TV show that brought you here because of the presentation of a man who claimed to be God and as we know is God, but you didn't know anything else, well, that's a great starting point and I welcome you on your journey. And what I do here is merely offer up a few prayers that I know and that I enjoy praying. All are welcome to, to join me here and to pray with me. We leave the denominations at the door. We are all here unified in Christ, seeking to, to just get a little bit closer each day to the man who none of us met in person on the earth, but who came to offer his life up for all of us so that we may have life beyond life on earth. And that it just doesn't, dis we just doesn't stop. We just don't disappear or end up merely in the ground because of the spirit within us and the spirit within us comes from God. So welcome, everyone, all of you. Thanks for spending this hour with me at Easter. Um, there isn't anywhere else I'd want to be than here praying with all of you. So as usual, before we do the chaplet, I will read from the lectionary make sure I have my B 
needs handy, I always like to have them in my hand. They have a nice weight to them, nice sound to them. I think the microphone's over here. You can hear that. So beautiful. Some words I think I'm going to read from you later on. One of my favorite devotions during Lent has been this book, When They Crucified My Lord. Through Lenten Sorrows to Easter Joy. And it's uh, written by uh, a monk named Brother Ramon. And uh, he was an Anglican Franciscan friar whose final days were spent exploring the hermitic life. Hermitic meaning like a hermit. Whenever I hear that word, I always think of Ben Kenobi from uh, Star Wars. Old Ben Kenobi the hermit. And he authored a number of books on uh, everyday spirituality. Really, really beautiful passages and days in this, especially uh, he'll take also the um, uh, each week has a different focus, um, focusing on a different perspective of those involved in the stories of the gospel. Um, the first week um, relates to the church, the church and state. So you have the church, it addresses Pilate and the crowd and the soldiers. And then week one after Ash Wednesday, uh, centers around um, John the Beloved, um, assuming he was the Beloved. Week two focuses on Peter, the rock. Week three focuses on Judas, the traitor. He's got a lot of beautiful thoughts about Judas and the conflict about how we consider Judas when everything is said and done. Week four is regards um, Mary, Jesus' mother. Week five is about being drawn to the cross and involves the characters of uh, meditations on Mary Magdalene, Simon of Cyrene, the centurion, the penitent thief, Nicodemus, Joseph of Arimathea, and, and the wailing women. Oh, it says waiting women. I think that's a misprint. The cross and the tomb. I think that's the wailing women. And then week seven is uh, seven words or phrases, really from the cross. And then I'm going to read a little bit from today's um, excerpt meditation on Easter. But first, I'll go over to... Uh-oh. internet connection. Okay. Um, hopefully this, yes, okay. For some reason, I wasn't getting Google here. thing here. Um, <laughs> I do not. Okay. I now have Wi-Fi. I didn't have Wi-Fi for a second because um, I've never connected to my friend's Wi-Fi here where I am now, but I was just able to connect through my phone. 
Let's try this again. Okay. Today's reading is from the first reading is from the book of Acts. Did you hear the bird? Oh, the bird singing along with us today. Oh, the bird praying along with us. Bob Ross, you see. Happy little bird, just chirping away, praying along with us, saying their prayers, praying the divine mercy. <laughs> uh, Acts chapter 10, verses 34, and then 37 to 43, if you have your Bibles. A reading from the book of Acts. Peter proceeded to speak and said, you know what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem, they put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible, not to all the people, but to us, the witnesses chosen by God in advance, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the responsorial psalm is actually the same psalm as yesterday. Because um, as far as the services go, some of the readings will be different from Saturday night, Holy Saturday night, the Easter vigil, to uh, compared to Sunday, Easter Sunday. Uh, but in this case, the psalm, uh, which we sort of proclaim is is the same as yesterday because it's the readings are pertaining to the same event which is the resurrection but it's Psalm 18 verses 1 to 2 16 to 17 and 22 23 and the response is this is the day the Lord has made let us rejoice and be glad this is the day the Lord has made let us rejoice and be glad Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Let the house of Israel say, his mercy endures forever. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. The right hand of the Lord has struck with power. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. And we 
have a choice for the second reading between two letters from St. Paul. I'm going to read the second one from the first letter to Corinthians, chapter 5, verses 6 to 8. A reading of the letters from the letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, do you not know that a little yeast leavens all the dough? Clear out the old yeast so that you may become a fresh batch of dough inasmuch as you are unleavened. For our Paschal Lamb, Christ, has been sacrificed. Therefore, let us celebrate the feast not with the old yeast, the yeast of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This, um, this next part here is just a, a paragraph of praises. Uh, and it's titled in Latin. I've never seen this before, but it's pretty cool. And it's called Sequence Victimae Pascale Laudes, which you will figure out once I read it. Christians, to the Paschal victim, offer your thankful praises. A lamb the sheep redeems. Christ, who, is, who only is sinless, reconciles sinners to the Father. Death and life have contended in that combat stupendous. The Prince of Life, who died, reigns immortal. Speak, Mary, declaring what you saw, wayfaring, the tomb of Christ, who is living, the glory of Jesus' resurrection, bright angels attesting, the shroud and napkin resting. Yes, Christ, my hope, is arisen. To Galilee he goes before you. Christ indeed from death is risen, our new life obtaining. Have mercy, Victor King, ever reigning. Amen. Alleluia. a bit of a song, isn't it? The Alleluia from 1 Corinthians. Alleluia, Alleluia. Christ, our Paschal Lamb, has been sacrificed. Let us then feast with joy in the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia. And our Gospel reading today is from the book of John. Chapter 20, verses 1 through 9. A reading from the Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. On the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning, while it was still dark, and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved, and told them, They have taken the Lord from the tomb, and we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial cloths there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial cloths there and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial cloths, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and believed. For they did not yet understand the scripture that he had to rise from the dead. 
Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to try to find something now for you. It is significant, but it's something most people never think about or even hear about. So John, in the gospel that we just read, notes the folding of the napkin that was placed over Jesus' face on the side of the burial cloths. I'm going to read a little bit from Aletia, a website, which addresses this very particular detail that some of you may not have known. I didn't know until recently. Why would John have noted the placement of the burial cloths in light of the astonishing fact of the absence of Jesus' body? And why would he have thought to have thought it important to include this detail in his telling of the events of that first Easter Sunday morning? In fact, it was an important detail. According to Father Christian Shankar, the rolling up and placement of this cloth hearkened to a Jewish custom of the time. It related to a common practice used by servants and masters of this area. A servant, after he had prepared the dining table for his master, would stand to the side, out of sight of the master, but attentive to the progression of the meal. He wouldn't dare to return to the table until the master had finished his meal. When the master was finished, he would rise, clean his fingers, mouth, and beard, and leave the napkin crumbled on a crumpled on a ball in the table on the table sorry there's a thing flashing at me let me say that again so when the master was finished he would rise clean his fingers mouth and beard and leave the napkin crumpled in a ball on the table the wrinkled discarded napkin indicated i have finished if however for whatever reason the master left the table with the intention of returning he would then crease the napkin into folds and leave it beside his dishes. This was a message for the servant that he was not to disturb the table, given that the master had indicated, I am returning. This, then, is perhaps the reason for John's attention to the detail of our Lord's face cloth. Jesus had told them with his words that the Son of Man would return that morning, he repeated the promise with the seemingly inconsequential but very symbolic gesture of leaving his faith cloth, face cloth rolled to the side, assuring us that he'd not left for good. And we are reminded of John 14, verses 27 to 28. Do not let your hearts be troubled or afraid. You heard me tell you, I am going away, and I will come back to you. So I just thought that was pretty cool. And the Gospels are full of so many details that are really brought to life with knowledge of the culture, right? Yeah, I encourage everybody to look into the, uh, the parallel aspect of the cultural significances of the stories 
in, 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 uh, and how they relate to the theological significance. And we are going to move now to the Novena, which includes the Chaplet of Divine Mercy, which today is day three. And today is day 33 of um, Holy Hour Prayers with you guys. And uh, how far we've come. We've made it 33 days. A very significant day indeed. It's, it's especially significant to me because it was unplanned in the calculation of the days. I just it completely spirit-led. I started the day after I uh, felt urged to start. And today uh, makes 33 days. I think it's very fitting that it's 33. Um, 33 years Christ lived on this earth and that we should complete 33 days on the day of Christ's resurrection uh, is, is profound to me and uh, uh, I don't take it lightly as you can imagine I don't take any of this lightly um, I take it with peace and with joy but um, with there is always a sense of weight and a sense of reverence and a sense of holiness that I try to approach this hour and uh, I hope you all feel that as well because it's with great devotion that I offer these prayers and I know so many of you do as well. And if you've never prayed in a group before or online like this, well, we're all learning this together. We're all going through this for the first time. So again, uh, it's beautiful that we can do this. Uh, for Jesus himself said, as we recall, that wherever two or more are gathered in my name, I am there among you even if it's through the internet. So, here we are. Today's novena, using the chaplet as instructed by Christ to St. Faustina through the vision she had of him, which she kept recorded in her diary, Faustina's diary, which you can uh, pick up a copy, you can order a copy of this online. The Marian brothers, um, Marians, brothers, the, the, the Marian brothers are priests that have the copyright for the diary and they keep the diary um, and they publish the diary for people to, to buy. Um, you can also maybe find it, I don't know if you can find it in your library, but uh, Marians of the Immaculate Conception, um, you can find them or just go to um, thedivinemercy.org and you can order a copy of her diary. It's like there was a, she kept it over years so so today's prayer is for all of the devout and the faithful souls which those of us here I think hopefully fall into that category so we begin uh, and you can find this on PrayMoreNovenas.com and um, 
friends over there remind us today is the day of victory. Victory over sin and death. As we pray with the whole church today in thanksgiving for our Lord's saving passion, death, and resurrection. And so let us pray the Novena prayers today with exaltation and gratitude for the great gift of mercy poured out through the resurrection of Christ our Savior. As we begin, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. And Christ told St. Faustina, today bring to me all devout and faithful souls and immerse them in the ocean of my mercy. The souls brought me consolation on the way of the cross. They were that drop of consolation in the midst of an ocean of bitterness. That road to the place of the skulls. How bitter for our Lord that must have been. And through this novena we meditate through his words here to St. Faustina on all the things that might have come into his mind as he was walking that very, very difficult path to Calvary. What gave him comfort? What gave him rest? What gave him respite? What allowed him to get through all of it, knowing that it was for our good, that there was something good to come from it? And according to his words, to St. Faustina, the souls of the devout and the faithful, those who did believe in him, those who choose, chose and who choose to believe in him, gave him consolation. We are part of that consolation, even now, because the cross and the road to the cross was not just 2,000 years ago. It is happening now. It is now and forever. Every day, every moment in time. Christ's sacrifice, God's existence is outside of time and space and dimension. So we have an opportunity to focus on this sacrifice, on this road to the cross at every moment in the day. Granted, God does not expect us to do that. He does not expect us to be focused on nothing but that. We've, he's given us lives with missions and families and, and interests and, and, you know, a place here on this planet but it is there for us to honor it whenever we can because it's always there in order for us to be saved. It's always there, it always exists. It is and has always happened, if that makes sense. So our prayers, like with this chaplet and with this novena, are always an opportunity to give Christ consolation on his road to Calvary. Most merciful Jesus, from the treasury of your mercy, you impart your graces in great abundance to each and all. Receive us into the abode of your most compassionate heart and never let us escape from it we beg this grace of you by that most wondrous love for the Heavenly Father, which your heart burns so fiercely. Eternal Father, turn your merciful gaze upon faithful souls as upon the inheritance of your Son. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, grant them your blessing and surround them with your constant protection. 
Thus may they never fail in love or lose the treasure of the holy faith, but rather with all the hosts of angels and saints, may they glorify your boundless mercy for endless ages. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And we begin our novena. If you have a set of rosary beads, you can follow along. And if not, you can just listen, close your eyes, take a few deep breaths, and meditate on the mystery of Christ's passion, death, and resurrection. You expired, O Jesus, but the source of life gushed forth for souls, and the ocean of mercy opened up for the whole world. O fount of life, unfathomable divine mercy, envelop the whole world and empty yourself out upon us. O blood and water which gushed forth from the heart of Jesus is a fund of mercy for us. I trust in you. O blood and water which gushed forth from the heart of Jesus as a fountain of mercy for us. I trust in you. O blood and water which gushed forth from the heart of Jesus as a fountain of mercy for us. I trust in you. Father, hear our prayers as we gratefully offer them up on behalf of your Son. Let us always keep your sacrifice at the forefront of our gratitude and praise, as well as our mercy towards others, our forgiveness and our compassion towards others as we strive to emulate the grace and compassion you have shown us. And as always, Lord, we ask for grace and protection for those suffering from the coronavirus, those who are working on the front lines to keep the rest of us protected, those who are working in essential services. We ask you, Lord, to lift them up in their time of need for strength and energy and vitality and health, Lord. And give us all good health, all of us and all our families. Give us all good health as we fight this pandemic. And we ask again for the repose of the souls of those who have gone before us as a result of this virus. In Jesus' name we pray. Hear us, Lord, as, as we say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. I believe in God, the Father, the Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father, the Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, 
Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For, for the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, 
Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us and on the whole world. May the Lord have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Eternal God, in whom mercy is endless, and the treasury of compassion inexhaustible, look kindly upon us and increase your mercy in us that in difficult moments we may not despair nor become despondent, but with great confidence submit ourselves to your holy will, which is love and mercy itself. Amen. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. Divine mercy, we trust in you. Saint Faustina, pray for us. Saint John Paul II, pray for us. Blessed Father Michael Sapochko, pray for us. All you heavenly angels and saints, pray for us. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan all evil spirits who wander about the world for the ruin of souls. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 All the people say, Thank you, friends. I think that was the least amount of folks we lost for the chaplain <laughs> in a few days. But it's all good. Everybody that's meant to be here praying is here. And for that, I'm very grateful. So blessed. Let me swipe back the comments. I want to show you. So my friend, Sigrid, whose place this is, she has, hello UK, Jenny. She has some beautiful um, holy artifacts. She's got a relic. She won't mind me showing you. So here, um, this is, I think, a first class relic, which means uh, it's a cloth from, a piece of cloth, I think, or fabric from something that a saint has touched or was part of theirs part of their clothing or something so it's super holy but this is just a nice little prayer section little devotional uh that's the kitchen uh it's just a little devotional section here a little devotional prayer corner and that's a cross of saint uh saint damiano cross which is known as the cross of saint francis and I'm going to um, I'm going to um, post this uh, image as well here, but this is a painting done by my good friend and Secret's good friend Jesse Cohen. Jesse is uh, a super talented artist, a painter, and I'm going to post where you can find more of his artwork. And that's another painting there. I don't know that that's by Jesse. But then you have my favorite Divine Mercy image. And then you have another image there that Jesse did of Christ. So, yeah. I'm surrounded by wonderfully holy friends. 
And actually, this is uh, this is a painting, one of the first images that Jesse ever did of Jesus uh, was an image that he wanted to see, an image of the Savior turning back and smiling at him like, hey, you know? So he painted this, how awesome is that? So I'm gonna post later on. I've been meaning to do it for weeks, but because I was so uh, entrenched in the play, The Last Days, oh, which I've, um, I just reposted it on, on YouTube. You know, it was pulled down on YouTube the other day. And I think I figured out why. Um, I think because uh, there was a box we were supposed to check uh, about being safe for kids, like under 13. And uh, I think we forgot to check the box because if you get some kids that access the internet and they just stumble across the crucifixion, that can be a little upsetting. So I think that's why they pulled it. But I posted it again on, on our YouTube page, The Last Days of Jesus uh, Passion Play, and it's the same logo as the play. And uh, it's up there still. So, and then they, they, they didn't pull down our, um, our production on Palm Sunday. So I'm pretty sure that's what it was. It's just we didn't check a box this time, uh, whereas I think it was set up differently on Palm Sunday. So I checked that box this time and um, it's still there. So for anybody that's not on Facebook that wants to see it, uh, and it should be in HD as well, if you wanna see it there. And uh, yeah, go check it out. I'll also post a link there as well. So yeah, so I'll post more. It, my whole point was that, uh, yeah, I've been wanting to post Jesse, because Jesse also helped redesign our website for the last day's passion play, uh, dot com. Uh, he's a brilliant designer. He's, he's uh, in Austria. Um, and I think uh, he makes his paintings available as well if he wanted a print or something like that. So, um, yeah. So that's that. Um, awesome. So, yeah. Christ is risen. Indeed, he's risen. Um, as they say in Arabic, Messiah kam. Christ is risen. Messiah meaning the Messiah. Messiah kam. Hakkan kam. Indeed, he's risen. So, El Messiah Kam, Hakkan Kam is the response. Christ is risen, indeed he's risen, because I am, as many of you know, um, Middle Eastern, or part Middle Eastern. Um, so yeah. So thank you so much. Uh, it's been wonderful spending Easter here with you. Um, I will continue as I, as I promised through Divine Mercy Sunday. We've got s six more days of the Novena. Uh, it ends on the Saturday before Divine Mercy Sunday, and there'll probably be a, uh, a final prayer that is always said with the uh, Novena folks from PrayMoreNovenas.com, and uh, that will be 40 days. How, how awesome is that factoid that it just, everything is just, I'm just following orders. Just following orders. That's all I'm doing here. That's why I'm here. So, I'll see what he tells me, what he places on my heart to do beyond 40 days. And uh, it may mean you're stuck with me for, for a little bit longer in some way, shape, or form. I don't know what it's going to look like. But, um, yeah, um, this is something that has really brought me a lot of peace. Uh, and I hope so for you as well. All right. Thank you. Uh, stay safe. Stay healthy. Tina, stay safe in that uh, tornado. We're praying for all of you. I'm praying for all of you and your needs and your intentions as we do every day together. Pray for me and uh, love everyone. And we'll, uh, we'll be talking to you. Uh, I'll be seeing you tomorrow at uh, about 3 o'clock on Monday. Uh, or if it's Monday already, it'll be uh, whatever time it is on Tuesday. So thank you. God bless. See you tomorrow.